My name is Miles Prince, I'm a haematologist. I work at the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Australia. And I thought I'd talk to you today about a very interesting case and a difficult case um, of a patient that I, I saw recently um, referred to us because of difficult to manage follicular tropic mycosis fungoides. Uh, this is a, a challenging area uh, because it is a more aggressive form of standard mycosis fungoides and what's particularly interesting this is a young person. The average age of MF is 70 years of age. So this was a 51 year old man who presented to, in January of 2013 and he actually had typically a one to two year history of uh, a large scaly annular plaques uh, and they'd actually predominantly been on his cheeks and arms uh, and he had a typical pattern of follicular tropism. Uh, the, he had treatment with some topical and intralesional steroids and then narrow band UVB uh, and some oral prednisolone and unfortunately none of them really had an, any sort of long-standing response. So he, the rash continued to worsen and by March of that year, so only a couple of months later, um, he presented to us and we recommended subcutaneous alpha interferon and that uh, a standard dose of one and a half million units three times a week and that's a dose that's relatively low um, and we often push patients up into two to three million units daily. Uh, he had that treatment for about nine months and in fact responded very well. However, one of the major problems he had, which is a problem that unfortunately we see fairly commonly, is mood changes. In him, it was quite significant with depression, and he actually had to, despite his best efforts, he had to discontinue the therapy. And so by January, that's about a year after his initial presentation, uh, he uh, was clearly uh, progressing, symptomatic, and he was started on methotrexate, and that was uh, 25 milligrams a week. And in fact, he had some stabilization initially um, but then slowly progressed. And when we saw him, he had plaque stage disease as well as on his upper limbs predominantly, but also to a lesser extent on his lower limbs uh, with 12% body surface area. And so by definition, he was stage 1B follicular trophic MF. So as this is often a histopathological diagnosis, we were very careful to review the pathology and it showed classic features of epidermotropism uh, and importantly, no evidence of transformation uh, but a clear follicular tropic element. Uh, what I've tried to provide you with is some photomicrographs of the uh, histopath, which you can go through, but in short, you can see the pictures of his face, which show that it's predominantly this follicular tropic with areas of, action of alopecia um, and raised uh, areas around the follicles. Uh, this was difficult to see on the photos of his arms, but it was definitely present, there were areas of alopecia. And then there's typical uh, patterns where you see the infiltrate of atypical small lymphocytes and no evidence of transformation. And you can see a good picture there around the uh, hair follicles and adnexia. And there's some uh, high um, magnification views of these atypical cells. So the, di di the disease here was not difficult to diagnose. Um, and he had uh, a demonstration of CD3 and CD4 positivity, classic for uh, uh, CTCL. Uh, but what was particularly interesting uh, and notable was that it was CD25 positive, and that's important because of the potential therapeutic maneuvers with the uh, fusion toxin uh, denylucan diftytox, and he's also CD30 positive, and you can see here relatively low level CD30 positivity, uh, but approximately um, 10 to 15 percent strong CD30. So that was the patient situation that we had and it was clear that he wasn't responding to the best treatment that we had and we considered the options and this is the, the sort of run through of options that uh, we were considering. This was unusual as I mentioned at the beginning that this was uh, a young man, uh, he was only 51 and so seriously considering allogeneic transplantation, which is something that we do rarely in cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, but follicular tropic MF is uh, intermediate between uh, low grade and more aggressive. And to be blunt, this man could well die of his disease in the next 10 to 15 years, and therefore allogeneic transplant should be considered. Based on the MD Anderson data, our routine is to combine that with total skin electron beam therapy. So that was one option. Second option is bexarotene, which can be very effective. Unfortunately, it's not routinely available in Australia, but it's fair to say that uh, at this point in time, if it was available, we certainly would give him a trial of bexarotene, but really that needs to be considered as a bridge to whatever his next treatment might, what his more definitive treatment might be. 
We could re -go, re revisit alpha interferon and use antidepressants, and quite frankly, if we had no other options, that would be uh, quite viable. I've mentioned denylukin diphtitoxin. It's available in the US. Uh, there's now a trial with the new next generation denylukin diphtitox E7777. Uh, and in fact, this is the trial that this patient is about to undertake uh, at our uh, institute. Uh, there is also the potential for brentuximab vadotin, and uh, it's not approved for CTCL, but it is clearly has activity. There's a number of phase two trials taking place around the world, and the preliminary uh, unpublished results should suggest that there's activity. And in fact, there's a lot, there's a randomised trial of uh, brentuximab vadotin versus physician's choice, which is either methotrexate or bexarotene. He hasn't had method, he's had methotrexate. So he's being randomised, he, he could be randomised and could either receive uh, uh, brentuximab, vadotin or bexarotene. And lastly, the consideration of a histone deacetylase inhibitor, uh, which clearly have activities. So the options would be varinostat or, or romidepsin. And we happen to have a trial which just got romidepsin lenalidomide, both of which have activity in cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. And then there's a choice of lenalidomide alone. Preference really is denylukin diphtitox to me in the short term uh, because there is a plateau, uh, there is a, uh, I use the word carefully, plateau. There are some patients who can go for many uh, months, even years, with denylukin diphtitox. So, um, a very interesting case uh, with tissue type, this gentleman, he has got a suitable donor, and I think transplantation is likely to be uh, a treatment for him in the future. Thanks very much.